Oh, it's definitely earned me more money. Just just like Decatur, they were paying 70 cents more for some or for uh, summer corn there in August. We were hauling corn 100 mile for 40 cents, and we're making 30 cents. And I wouldn't even known that price was probably on there. I wouldn't have thought of calling Decatur, but when you go to the Growers Edge page, then it, it takes all that running around out of it for you. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills, this is Logan Burgess. Today is Friday the 29th, one day after Thanksgiving. Corn traded down one and a quarter cents. Beans trading up 16 and three quarters. Wheat in Chicago trading up five and a quarter cents. And Kansas City wheat trading up two and three quarters cents. Logan, very interesting trade, particularly for soybeans. Right. We did have export sales this morning. Is that what contributed? Uh, you know, I certainly think it helped the bean market move higher in today's action. We saw soybeans, corn, and wheat all beat trade expectations in terms of weekly sales. And right now, it's been a big story in the grains recently is that the USDA is probably going to need to make some revisions higher uh, to their export expectations in the December 10th USDA WASDE report. Right now our models show soybean sales are about 330 million bushels ahead of pace uh, to meet the current expectations and corn is 212 million bushels ahead of pace. So certainly a supportive story here has been uh, really on the table I think for soybeans uh, and wheat primarily here in recent trade sessions. We saw that carry into today's action. Take a look here at a daily chart of that January contract. You can see we have this volume indicator at the bottom of the screen. Certainly very light volume, which is to be expected. You know, Cody, looking at the technical landscape and kind of considering the fundamentals, uh, do you think that this positive price action that we see here is going to continue into next week, or do you think that some sellers uh, are going to dominate the trade as we see more volume? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, this was very light volume that we saw these gains, and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the open on Sunday night, we see a little bit of these gains taken off the table as some of the major traders uh, yeah. are back in the office and able to trade. One of the things though, I, I think as a producer here, we're going to want to take that wait and see approach. When we get more volume back into the market, I think that's going to be the tell as to where the direction is going right. forward. Uh, right now with the, the volume, the low volume that we see, I, I think you know we did see positive export sales. That was yeah. a very good story. But the bottom line here is that you could push the market up on this light volume and it may be a little bit of a fake out. It's good to see Bottom line for producers out there, if we close below today's open on Monday's volume uh, or Monday's trade session yep. with strong volume, I think that opens the door for significant selling pressure. But as for right now, we have good movement higher. I say let's, uh, let's try and go with the flow here. Yep. Let's sit on our hands on Monday. I think that's going to be the big tell for the remainder of the week. Yeah, certainly. You know, Cody, we've seen uh, bases come off quite a bit for soybeans during this run. It's certainly not surprising, you know, when we see futures rally, a lot of times bases will come off. But we've certainly seen a lot of uh, premium uh, elevators pulling their bases back for spot delivered soybeans in recent trade sessions. It is Friday here, so we like to take a look at the changes in the cash market. Uh, on average here, Cody, what were we seeing across the country this week? Well, the nice thing about this week is really we were only down about a half penny uh, for soybeans uh, in terms of basis across yep. the U.S. Uh, one of the major strengths for soybeans was really the river. Now, anything south of Iowa, we saw significant strength. And, yep. I mean, we were seeing uh, on average, you know, kind of like 10 cent uh, movements higher. A lot of elevators in that southern part uh, moving 10 cents higher here. The area where we saw weakness uh, was Minnesota and Iowa. Those areas are a little bit uh, kind of unexcited about taking on right. additional uh, grain positions here as we move toward that uh, the season where the, uh, the, uh, the river freezes. Right. So uh, the bottom line here, I think we had decent strength. We did see soy plants move off a little bit in terms of basis, down about two cents. For corn, we did uh, we moved up. You know, on average across the U.S., we moved a little bit higher here. Everything seemed to tick up about a penny, uh, so it was good to see pretty strong, uh, pretty strong cash market here for corn. Yeah, certainly. We'll have to see kind of what the action carries into next week. Uh, soybeans continues to be an area of strength. Wheat as well. There are some concerns about a winter kill scenario here this weekend, especially in the southern plains. And we remain, or we continue to see relatively strong export sales pace for wheat and a lot of aggressive bidders. We've talked about it a little bit on the show today. Uh, Egypt and Iraq and potentially Iran here in the next couple of weeks. Um, so wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of strength uh, continue in wheat. I think though, like you said, Cody, it's going to be a big question, and, and but it's going to it's going to give us a lot of direction based on what we see on Monday. If you guys have any questions about what we discussed here on Grain TV, feel free to give us a call at the office. Our number is eight seven seven. 
472-4607. And we now have a great mobile trading app available here for iPhone, iPad, Android, and tablet. If you want to take a look at it for yourself, visit us at grainhedge.com and take a no-obligation demo. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.